Olá. Um prazer imenso Hello. Estar com vocês It's an immense pleasure to be once again with you. Um And today we're going to speak about a subject that's very difficult for you to find in people. But these are teachings God left for us. We need to have this quality of life. And it came from God Himself. So pay close attention to this teaching. The Holy Scripture leaves no doubt. The Holy Scripture, which is God's will, it leaves no margin to be interpreted differently. This message is quite clear. So let's begin with the scripture of Philippians chapter 4 verse 8. Please, just look and let's meditate. The Apostle Paul, the Apostle Paul, guiding the church of Philippi, he says, finally, brethren, he is addressing the brothers, not addressing the unbelievers. The scripture is not for one who is not of the faith or who does not live by faith or one who does not have the Spirit of God. No, this is exclusively for those who are in the body of the Lord Jesus, which is His church. Jesus is the head of the church, and the church is those who form part of this body. And these members obviously have the Spirit of God. So the Apostle, guided by the Holy Spirit, he wrote, Finally, brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are true, this word is so powerful, isn't it, Esther? It's well defined. What's not fake, what's not false, Whatever things are true, not only in the case of the false, but also those who speak lies, tiny lies, white lies as they call it, they already ceased being true. Because either one is or isn't. Jesus said, let your yes be yes, your no, no. So whatever things are true, whatever is honest, and honesty is not only in the fact of you giving the, the right change to a person, but honesty as a whole, your entire being of you being transparent, for you to be clean, pure, for you to be upright, honesty in the sense of feeling of faith. Even speaking, one needs to be honest when speaking, not commenting. For example, in fake news, people are far from honesty. And this is what we see the most nowadays. Whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just. Look, pay attention, friends. This scripture, it gives the profile of God's character because God is justice. And out of justice comes what is truthful, what is honest, what is noble, what is just, what is pure, whatever is lovely comes out of it. All things that are, that are of good report come out of it because justice sustains the throne of God. The Bible says that the throne of God is founded by righteousness, which means something true, upright, noble, just, everything which is pure. Something which is horrid or horrible, it's terrible, is for you to buy an object believing that that is exactly what the description 
reads or what the salesman mentioned. And when you get home, you open the packaging and you realize that it's not as pure as the salesman claimed. So there was a lie. There was a deceit. So it's really tough to be deceived by impurity. Whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, if there is any virtue and if there is anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. That's what we should think about. So when a person or when God, when God said to Abraham, be blameless, be perfect as I am, he was asking Abraham to be perfect when he asks us to be perfect that's exactly it all these qualities to be truthful noble pure not malicious to be transparent to be pure clean everything which is pure clean comes from God and then one might say Bishop Honestly speaking, it is impor impossible to live in this world and have such a profile, such a character, which God requires of us. But I believe God does not ask anything which we cannot attend to. He knows we are clay. We're clay. But in order for this clay to become a vessel for his glory, so then it is necessary for one to allow themselves to be molded. This one needs to be made according to his character, to mold his character according to his word. Because this is what pleases God. What pleases God is not for you to simply know his word. Because to know his word, the devil also knows. But one thing is to know something else is to live it, to practice it. And this is what God desires from each and every one of us. This is why Paul speaks to the brethren. They had what it took. They had what it took to attend to this. Why? Because initially, they had the Holy Spirit. Because only he who has the Holy Spirit can have such a profile. And he also says, he says all of this for us to acquire in our faith for our well-being. Because if you're not honest to someone, you are unjust, you are going to reap that which you planted, the evil which you planted, the lie you planted, the injustice, you will reap it. So this is for our well-being, which means he wants what's best for us to live in this world, along with others, how to deal with difficult people, which means you are going to practice every teaching of his. And this is difficult. This is extremely difficult. You have to swallow everything that comes your way because it is tough, extremely tough. Only when one has the Holy Spirit is he capable of doing such. And this is why Paul also says, Whoever does not have the Spirit of God is not His. Which means it's necessary for you to have the Holy Spirit in order to have a character according to what God wants from us. And this character is the character of holiness. To live in holiness. To live in holiness is to live with this kind of behavior here. So here is the recipe, the recipe of one who is perfect before God. One who has access to the presence of God. Because God is pure, God is just, God is truthful, He's noble, He's honest, whatever, or rather everything God is, is, he, are, is here 
in these virtues, even the thoughts, because at times you don't practice certain things which you see, but the thoughts are impure. So you also need to watch your thoughts. We spoke a while ago on Instagram specifically about this, the thoughts. Because when a person is in search of the baptism with the Holy Spirit, those filthy thoughts come. Those disgusting thoughts come. I remember, I was remembering that in my teenagehood, when we converted, we wanted to receive the Holy Spirit. So the more I sought, the more those filthy thoughts, which I don't even have the courage to tell anyone, anyone, God knows what they were. But they were diabolic, satanic thoughts which would come at the moment I was seeking to receive the Holy Spirit. But then I learned with the passing of time that in order for me to overcome those filthy thoughts, I had to oppose, oppose those thoughts with clean, with good thoughts. I had to glorify God. In spite of that entire filth, I would adore the Lord. And it's what we observe, Esther, that amongst filth, the mud, it's where the most beautiful flowers are born. So there is such a chance. So friends, whatever thoughts you have which opposes the word of God, you have what it takes to overcome it. Why? Because the Spirit of God gives you what it takes to overcome this. He does not give us anything that we can't put up with. He doesn't ask us anything we can give, rather. He knows our capacity, our condition, so He attends to us according to our needs. So just as He sees the devil tempting with filthy thoughts, he also gives us what it takes to resist such thoughts with his thoughts. And this makes the difference. I wanted to say that for you to have peace, you need to fight against such thoughts because that's where your strength lies. You resist evil. Resistance. My resistance was to worship the Lord. I learned to worship the Lord in the moments of greatest temptation. And since the devil hates seeing one adoring, worshiping the Lord God, and this is only profitable if you have a clean conscience. God gave us this conscience. If you practice impurity, your conscience will accuse you. It will accuse you. And then the devil has a reason. Then the devil starts to have a reason. But if you overcome, your conscience rests in peace. You rest and immediately fall asleep. I know that everything will stay behind. If Jesus comes within the following years, within this decade, then everything will stay behind and whoever wants to use whatever they want, they can use it freely. But those who go to him will be glorified by God himself in the eternity. But the important is this. What connection is there with constructing a temple with much comfort or every comfort possible, aesthetics, everything integrating in order for people to arrive and have that comfort to worship the Lord God. Why so much expenditure? At times people say, Bishop, why spend so much with churches and temples and so forth? 
Look, of course, these people did not think. They don't think on God. They think on themselves. Because they are looking at the stone. They are looking at the construction. But they are not looking in the spiritual point of view and what that means, what that represents. Because if it were not necessary, God would not order to build, to erect the tabernacle in the desert, in the desert. And whenever the people of Israel would travel to the promised land, they had to dismantle the entire work which was done. And it was an extremely tough work because it was in the middle of the desert, but God did this. And later on, through Solomon, God built his temple, the Temple of Solomon, of which the replicas here in Sao Paulo. Why this? Why this astronomic expenditure? Because everything was, was made in gold the interior the sanctuary of the temple of solomon why jesus came and concluded that these temples we call the temple which is the church in reality it symbolizes the lives of those who form part of the body of the lord jesus the body of the lord jesus is the church the body of the Lord Jesus is the church and he is the head. So when we strive in building a temple, in actual fact, we are working on building a much more superior temple, which is the spiritual one, because in such places, in such buildings, which are wonderful, comfort, comfortable, People will have the right, the privilege to seek and receive the Spirit of God. Or do you think that we could brush these temples aside, these monumental constructions aside, to praise God in an old cinema as it happened in Osasco? In Osasco, the people were praising God in an old cinema. And since there was a construction by next to it, when it rained, it collapsed and 25 people died because we were in an uncomfortable place with no guarantee. We didn't know. But not today. God permitted that tragedy as specifically for us to open our eyes and learn that He wanted something great, glorious. And it's important to mention that any Jew, or better said, any Muslim, any Muslim, when a Muslim is rich, really wealthy. His priority is to build a mosque more comfortable, more beautiful than what his brother constructed. So they dispute who will construct the most beautiful mosque. This is the purest of all truth. Not only them, but the Indians too. They dispute who will construct the most beautiful church for their respective gods. Come on, my friends. We who have the Holy Spirit, should we not unite and seek to build a temple which will glorify, honor, dignify our God? And today it's a spiritual ER. It is a nursery where people will be born again. All of it according to what the Bible says. That we shall be new creatures. So 
it must be in this place for them to get to know this wonderful God who performs the miracle of the new birth. So you who are keeping up with us, I would like just the last picture of the construction. Look how beautiful. It's got that Brasilia lifestyle an artwork. So when a person enters such a place, it doesn't matter his social status, if he's ugly, beautiful, fat or skinny, it doesn't matter whether he's a homosexual, lesbian, heterosexual, it doesn't matter whether one is a villain or a good person. The color, the race does not matter. Whether man or woman, nothing matters. Is he a soul? Is it a soul? So the soul must be invested on so that God's character, God's spirit may fill him with his glory, which is what happened in the inauguration of the Temple of Solomon. You know, you can read this in the Bible, in the construction of the temple, when God inaugurated it, it was an outpouring a glorious outpouring of the Spirit, the Holy Spirit. So when we build a temple parallel in parallel, we are building our own lives, spiritually speaking, the University of Faith. So you, friends, for example, this young man who is an entrepreneur, who invested in the pillars of this temple and many others who invested and are investing. Each pillar, I don't know how many millions of reels it costs, I don't know the value. I'm not really bothered with how much is being spent. I want to know the following. We are building because it reflects the interest we have not only my interest, but of all who form part of the Universal Church of the Kingdom of God, the members, those who are watching and coming, seeking for help. When you invest out of the little you have on such a construction, in actual fact, you are investing in your own life. It's as we spoke, Esther, in the construction of the Temple of Solomon. At the beginning, I said, whoever invests in this temple will become rich, and many have become wealthy. Of course, this does not guarantee the salvation, eternal salvation. This does not guarantee. But one tastes the comfort, the best of the land, which God promised to His people. And if one does not remain, that's his problem along with God. But we are going to do our part. Each one does his part. Each one lays his own brick in this construction. And obviously, obviously God will bless the work of these people's hands. You see that this work did not stop. In spite of the pandemic, God gave us the support. How does God give us the support? He will not make money fall from heaven. No, He won't. But He will bless the members of this house, of this temple, of the universal church. He will bless the members. And the members will work, unite themselves, and continue investing in the construction of the temple, which is of the body, of the body of our Lord Jesus. This is wonderful, Esther. And the space for many, 7,000 people sat down comfortably. And this is an opportunity for everybody to get to know God. And there's a multitude where it's being constructed and people would ask, Bishop, please, 
We need a larger church. The heat is unbearable. There is no place for my children. I have small children. I don't have the CBC. I don't have what it takes to come. We don't have what it takes to come and peacefully speak to my God at home. There's already a bunch of problems with husband, wife, children, parents. It's a problem with the children. I'd like a place in which I can be in peace within myself and above all with God. So this is why we invest and it's worth it. I know that all of this will stay behind. As Jesus said, a stone will not remain upon another. I know that this earth will burn. The world will burn and we're reaching the end. But that's not a reason for us to fold our arms and wait for Jesus to come and not. No, we need to work. We need to carry on. Our war, our challenge never stops by no means. So when you invest on a construction, on a work, for example, when you invest on the Universal Church of the Kingdom of God, you see the work which we are doing daily. Daily. It's in the morning, afternoon, the evening, throughout the day, non-stop. The work of the Universal Church does not stop. There are always people attending to and helping, receiving those who are needy because of this desire to take to you, friends, at least that which God has given us. That's our faith. We know that many people will know God. But even if one person comes, it does not pay the preciousness the value of one life, of one soul. I've always had this vision, this understanding, Esther, that as much as we spend on the construction of building a temple like the Temple of Solomon, if one soul only is saved, all that money, all those millions spent are worth it. More than all the wealth of this world Imagine these millions here for God that's nothing. Today how many testimonies have we had of people who said when I entered the temple of Solomon I was amazed. Immediately they feel peace. Just setting their foot and they see that it's a special place and that's a holy ground it was consecrated for the building of this temple so friends if you can help and you want to help you are a business person you want to invest in something which will give you profit your eternally, eternally. Nothing better than to build a temple for our Lord Jesus Christ to be glorified. The sacrifice we make for such a temple to be built, it's worth it because much more He did for each and every one of us. When people arrive at the Universal Church, and I speak about the Universal Church because that's where I work and I see with my own eyes. I won't speak about the others. I speak about that which we see it firsthand. So when people arrive at the Universal Church, their lives are like, like a shack, worse than a shack. At times there's no shack. It's under a bridge. When they begin to obey the word of God, to become allies with God, and they start to become, to have communion with God and match with God and become one with God, partner with God and educate themselves about God, live a life daily, constantly, according to the Word of God, that shack is demolished and a temple is built for the glory and habitat of the Lord Holy Spirit. And this is what happens in the lives of all those who receive the Holy Spirit. They have a life 
which means a new house. Just imagine what God is preparing there in heaven. If here it's, it's already wonderful with such transformation of life. So this is what people need to understand. That the house of God is each and every one of us who live according to the word of God. It says Jesus said, Jesus said the following. My sheep hear my voice, my voice, my word, and follow me. When one is not a sheep of Jesus' flock, this creature is led to the pastures of the desert, to the most arid places. Jesus then said, My sheep, my sheep, hear my voice. And I know them, and they follow me. And this is interesting for you to understand, because in those days, they would build, they would dig a hole, and in that hole, in the surroundings of that pit, that hole, the borehole, a town would be built. So the shepherds would come with their flocks to that borehole. And the flocks, some, for example, would have 50, others 100, others 150. So the sheep would gather in the surrounding of that borehole but the shepherds would not be worried about having their sheep getting lost because each sheep knew the voice of his shepherd perfectly. So they would be mixed there amongst in the surrounding of that borehole. But when the shepherd would say, let's go, let's go, my sheep. So those who would hear that voice, they would follow the voice and would separate from the others. So there were no challenges, no conflict amongst shepherds because some went with the others. No, because the shepherd hear the voice of the shepherd, the good shepherd, and follows. So when a person arrives at the universal church, he's starts hearing the voice of the Good Shepherd, which is the voice of the Holy Spirit, the Word of God. When they practice, when they practice that Word, obey that Word, so then, a new life is built. And then, as with the testimonies, it takes place. And it must take place with you as well, friends. Because faith is not religion. Faith is life. Faith is the result of a communion with God. Faith is practicing that which God promises in His Word. So the intelligent faith produces produces the building for God, which is your life. So your life must be the glory of God in this world. But for that, the glory of God will not dwell in or under a bridge or at a street corner where there are so many people drunk. No, the temple of, of God is built at the best places for the glory of God so that everyone may see and everyone may participate of this glory in the name of the Lord Jesus. So, you are welcome and you can be one of these who will receive this present from God which is the Holy Spirit.